Welcome to class tonight. I do hope that you all are doing well and you all had a good week. Now, we're going to be taking a break from our book, specifically our work in geometry, to focus on TCAP and specifically to prepare you for what you are going to see in next week uh, on TCAP. Now, TCAP is broken down and covers seven specific standards. And we're going to be covering all seven of those standards. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on standard one. Quantities can be expressed and compared using ratios and rates. We're focusing on ratios and rates. Now, this can be found in Chapter 6 of your book. I would strongly encourage you guys to check out, read through Chapter 6 again, because that's really going to help you out for TCAP. Now, in the back of your book, very back of your book, on page 647, you will see a Chapter 6 extra practice. Well, we're going to be working on that tonight. In fact, all the problems we're going to be doing are from page 646, or sorry, sorry, 647 in your book. So go ahead and turn to that page right now, please. Now, before I go ahead and begin, I do want to go ahead and tell you this now. You will be expected to turn your notes in. So what I want you to do is I want you to take notes on, this, on these videos. You'll be expected to turn in your notes as proof you watch the video. Tomorrow in class, your teacher is going to ask you, did you watch the video? And your notes are proof that you watched the video. So what I want you to do is, as I do problems, write them down, copy them down, pause the video every now and then to write these, write these um, problems down and write how to solve these problems. So, once again, your proof that you did this will be your, home, or will be your notes. All right, so let's go and get started on page 647. Let's go ahead and start off with ratio. So basic, a ratio is simply a comparison of two numbers by division. Now, ratios can be written three ways. You see one way, number one, you see a fraction, looks like a fraction. That's technically a ratio. You see number two, you see another way with a colon. And then finally, you could also put the word two, T-O, in between two numbers, and that would also be a ratio. So we're comparing these two numbers. Now, when we say write two different ratios equal to each ratio, all you have to do is find an equivalent ratio. To do that, all you have to do is either multiply or divide both numbers by the exact same number. Once again, just multiply or divide both numbers by the exact same number. It'll look something like this. So, I'll use a different color. So 30 over 60. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 2. That's an easy number. So, 30 by 2 is going to be 60. 60 by 2 is going to be 120. So there we have, ladies and gentlemen, that is an equivalent fraction. It is equal to 20 or 30 sixtieths because all I did is multiply by technically 1. I multiply both sides by the exact same number, and so I get 30 sixtieths. Another one would look like this. I can either divide by 2, I can multiply by 3, I can multiply by 18, as long as I multiply both sides with the same number. So, let's just do multiply by 3. So, I multiply 30 times 3, I would get 90, and then 60 by 3, I would get 180. So, there you have two specific equivalent fractions to that one right there. Finally, this last one, I'm sure you can figure out very quickly. All I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do is multiply both numbers by the exact same number. So 5 times, let's do 2, that'll be easy. So 5 times 2 is going to be 10. 15 times 2 is going to be 30. So, ooh, let me write it correctly. Ooh, let me write it correctly. Oops. Alright, there we go. Let me write it correctly. Uh, so it'll be 10 to 30. Now I could do another one by simply multiplying by 3, or 4, or 5, or 6. I'll multiply 3 just because it's easy. So it would be, uh, it would be 15 45ths. So those are equivalent fractions, or equivalent ratios to those ones. Alright, now proportions. Proportions, if you remember, proportions are simply a set, a pair, of two equivalent ratios. Okay, two equivalent ratios. Back here, we found equivalent ratios. On this one, we're going to see if they are equivalent ratios. So on number 8, we see 6 thirtieths and 3 fifteenths. All I'm going to do is figure out, are they equivalent fractions? Now the way I do it, the way I do this, all I do 
is see if I can multiply, let's do 3 15 because it's smaller, can I multiply 3 15 by something to get 6 30ths? Well, yes, I can. If I multiply both sides by 2, I would get 6 30ths. So look at that. I have equivalent ratios. So the answer number 8 is equal. They are equivalent ratios. Now, number 9, actually 9 twelfths and 12 ninths. So can I somehow make those the exact same fraction? Can I multiply or divide by some number? to make those the exact same fraction. Well, you can search and search and search, but I can guarantee you, you will not find an equivalent fraction. So this one right here, the answer is not equal, and that's the not equal sign. Those are not equivalent ratios. They are not a proportion. All right, something else we can do with ratios, something very cool, is actually we can, is what we call finding the unit price of something. Okay, so what we're going to be doing to find the unit price is simply making a ratio. Now, if you remember back to the very first slide, a ratio is a comparison of two numbers using division. So all we're going to do to find the unit price for this is simply divide. Now, if you were in, uh, well, in my classes, you could make a proportion out of this. Okay, so what I would do, let's go ahead and look at this first one. All right, so we're, look, we're looking to find each unit price rounding to the nearest cent and then determining the better buy. So now, I would look like this. I want to know what one ounce of rice costs. Okay, that's what I want to find out. What does one ounce of rice? Now, I don't know that, but what I do know is that eight ounces costs $1.95. I do know that, but I don't know how much one ounce costs. So, I can cross multiply. So, it would be uh, 8x equals $1.95. I divide by 8. And so x is going to equal, and so here I'm going to do some division work. Now this is the actual work that goes into the problem. I'm going to divide by 8, so it's going to be 2. 16, that's going to be 3. Bring down the 5. 4, I carry up my decimal. So my answer is 20. Four cents. So my first one, right here, this equals 24 cents. Now let's find out this next one. 12 ounces for $2.99. And $2 so once again, I'll set up my proportion. 1 over x, I don't know what 1 ounce costs. 1 over x equals $2.99. So I'm going to solve my proportion once again. So it'll be 12x equals uh, $2.99. Divide by 12, x equals, well, let's see, 2.99 divided by 12, so that's going to be 2, that's going to be 4, so right there, bring it up, once again, look at that, 24 cents, so 12 ounces equals also 24 cents. So in this case, they are equal. This unit price in this case are equal. So there's no better buy. They are the same. All right. Now, one, on to one of the last things we're going to be working on is writing each percent as a decimal and as a fraction in simplest form. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you do remember that a percent is simply a decimal in the hundreds place. Okay, so what I can do is I can take 96%, and that would be the exact same thing as decimal in the, percent, uh, the, decimal in the hundreds place percent. So right there, 96% equals 96 hundreds. Same thing with 80%, that would be 80 hundreds, or we could say 8 tenths. Now, as a fraction, this takes, it does take a little more work, 96 over 100, because remember, 96 hundredths, same thing, 80 hundredths. Now, this one's very easy. 8 tenths, that simplifies to, so it's going to be 4 fifths right there. Now, this one's going to take a little more work, 96 and 100. Now, you could divide by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to reduce this fraction now. So 96 divided by 2 is going to be, let's see, uh, 96 divided by 2, that's going to be 4 
and 8, so we have 48 fiftieths. Oh, we can still reduce that. So 48 is going to be 24. Fiftieths is going to be 25. 24 25ths. Oh, I don't think I can go any further than that. And that's true. So right there. So I have mine as a decimal and as a fraction. Decimal and a fraction. You see, I just created the fraction over 100 and then reduced. Now, I'm going to write each decimal or fraction as a percent. So with this one, I'm going to do 32 hundredths. All I'm going to do is simply move the decimal back two places. So that equals 32%. Now this one with 3 fourths, this is going to take a little more work because what I have to do is I actually have to get it to 100. So the question is, and what I would do, what times 4 equals 100? Well, 25 times 4. So 25 times 3, that's going to be 75. So look at that, ladies and gentlemen. 75 over 100, and I can take 75 over 100 and easily make that as 75. Seventy-five percent. So there we go. I took my decimal, made a percent. I also took my percent and made them fractions and decimals. All right. Finally, very last a couple questions in this uh, video. We're going to be working on finding the percent of a number. Finding the percent of a number. So I have a couple examples up here. Number thirty-four on this page. So twenty percent of eighty. Now all I'm going to do is take my percent make it a decimal, and then multiply. Now, this right here of that word is a key word. You should think multiply. When you see that word of, you should see, you should hear in mathematic, mathematic, mathematical terms, you should see multiplication. So what we're going to do, 80 times 0 0.20. Okay, see I just took my percent and made it a decimal. Bam, right there. All right, so it's going to be 0, 0. And I bring my decimal down. Remember, I count my decimal places. One decimal place, two decimal place. So, 1, 6, 0, 0, 1, 2. So my answer is going to be 16. So 20% of 80 is 16. Now, for number 36, it's almost just as easy. All we're going to do, take 86. We hear of, we think multiply, so we're going to multiply it by the decimal form of 50%, so it's going to be 0.50. Multiply that, it's going to be 30, that's 43, and so I go 0, 0, 43, and I go 1, 2 decimal places, 1, 2 decimal places, and so my answer is 43, so 50% of 86 is going to be 43. All right, well, that is the lesson tonight. I know this, is, this video is a little bit longer, but there's a lot to cram in. Once again, tomorrow in class, you need to show your teacher your notes. That's how you uh, prove you watch the video. Well, show them your notes. All right, tomorrow in class, we'll do some more work. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you all tomorrow.